Welcome learner, uh, this is our class of AutoCAD and I would like us today uh, to learn how to work with AutoCAD application uh, and uh, before we begin please subscribe to this channel uh, the channel is my graphics office solutions uh, please do make sure you have subscribed so that uh, you are going to get updates of other videos that I'm going to share with you and uh, write the video if you like it if you, if you grab it and uh, also share with a friend so that we can get to run together uh, now AutoCAD in simple is computer aided graphic design it is going to help you to work with graphical uh, projects be them structural be them uh, 3d object uh, realization prana uh, projects like uh, it be an object that you may want to represent in a, in a, in a flat service uh, product packaging we have so many design works that you can represent graphically and that is what is going to, uh, AutoCAD is going to help us so if you look in our notes we have reasons why we may opt to work with AutoCAD and uh, the difference between CAD and AutoCAD so getting started with the window AutoCAD window it uh, looks the way you can see it here uh, you first come and open your application After you have opened your application, you are ready to go. You should be able to identify the different parts of the screen, like you can see them demonstrated here. So at the very bottom, we have the command, uh, the command right area, and the access. We have the worldwide uh, system or the AutoCAD origin. We call it the world uh, worldwide uh, world co coordinate system uh, origin or the default outcard origin. Uh, the UCS or user coordinate system, uh, it is the same as the world coordinate system. Only the difference is that the UCS can be defined other than the default origin where WCS uh, is you can define the UCS to be somewhere else uh, later during exercises we are going to see that the cursor that you see on the screen that you move around on the screen that is what you call the crosshair and uh, then the drawing whatever you are going to draw you, you should be able to to do it on the on the tire of this area so that in the black area that is the drawing area and we have the tools on either side this side with these are the drawing tools these are the uh, modifying tools and uh, at the top here we have other menu bars we have the menu bars so this is the the title bar this is the menu bar these are the standard tool bar and this is the uh, property bar and we have other bars that you uh, uh, tool bars that you can be able to activate so to do that you come under a card you just right click on an on, on, on an empty area on a gray area here go to a card these are two rubbers that you can activate so the ones that we are going to use mostly are the dimensioning the turba uh, dimensioning turba the drawing turba the modifying turba the three we are going to for now we are going to work with the three so uh, let's just throw them in here. 
So you can see the three. We have the dimensioning, drawing, and modifying toolbars. So we have seen where the the, the, the drawing area, the crosshair, and the command area are. And later you're going to see how we actually can work with the command area. And uh, the status bar at the very bottom of the window. Can you see the status bar below the below the command area? We have the status bar there, where we have the listing of the tools like the snap, the grid. Wh what other tools can you see there? The snap, the grid. That is where the st they are at the status bar. The author and these others that are listed there. So. snap controls the movement of the cursor and then the grid uh, activate the the work area grid lines the other also uh, control the movement of the uh, drawing points so when you are drawing the other if it is on it's going to call to the dictate that either you draw vertical or horizontal or uh, this uh, control the or track uh, paths for example in angular if you are doing from here you are, if you are doing a line from here if it goes at a given direction it, the the para can can help you track the angle direction of that uh, the snaps mm, settings the o snap uh, specify object snaps uh, if it is active it is going to to help you uh, uh, it is going to help you to track the properties that are listed for you here the edge points of lines the mid points of lines the center of a, of a circle uh, the extension of lines uh, perpendicular of lines uh, tangent point of uh, an object those you can be able to track them uh, we call these turubas floating turubas because you can see that I'm floating them anywhere. But we usually can attach them to specific positions in the screen. So we say we are docking them. We are docking them in a specific area on the on the screen. So what we have done, we have docked them. Now these settings. If I am drawing an object, let's say I have a circle here, and I wanted to draw a line. Can you see? I can be able to see the quadrant points of the circle. I can also see the center of the circle. If I was to draw a line from another po point and uh, the nearest point, I can track the near the near point. I can track the tangent point. So all those I'm able to do when these are on and uh, you make sure they are on by coming to OSNAP you right click and go to settings you can see in my case all of them are on so that I am able to track the line edge points the, for this case what I have shown you already is the quadrant points you can see I was able to track the quadrant points the nearest point, the tangent point, the perpendicular point if uh, if for example if for example i'm drawing a line there and then i'm drawing another line here can you see uh, i'm able to uh, uh, call uh, i'm able to track the perpendicular point of the two lines yeah and if uh, yeah that is what i have been able to to track using that and uh all this we are going to see as we move on uh, the menus we call them pull down menus or drop down menus 
these ones because you can see you, they are dropping down as you point on them or you cl click on them so the, we have different uh, menus there uh, we have seen some three turbo bars the modifying turbo bar, the drawing turbo bar, the dimensioning turbo bar, the standard turbo bar, the four are very necessary and the respective tools can also be seen in the menus the, all the tools are the drawing turbo bar are also seen on the drawing menu you can pick tools from the drawing menu as you can just do from the turbo bar the dimensioning toolbar whatever tools are there they are also on the dimensioning menu and as well as the ones on the drawing uh, modifying toolbar they are also there on the modifying menu so you can see them there also so the, the toolbars you have been told uh, we have the standard toolbar, the property bar, we have seen that, the drawing toolbar, we have seen that. And we are, we said either we float the toolbars or we dock them. We have seen what it means by floating the toolbars or docking them. Uh, if you float them on the screen, then they are working as floating toolbar. But if you attach them to specific area on the screen then you are docking them there we have parrots uh, you can see some discussion of the different types of parrots that we have in uh, AutoCAD one is pre-designed and the second is customizable uh, parrot. I want to give an example of one of them. to give an example of a parrot that I can be able to see from here. So one of the parrots you can see them where they are listed and I would like to, to see an example of a parrot. For example let me see um, I'm trying to figure out where I can find a parrot to demonstrate uh, with. Our design center is going to open in a parrot. Can you see? It? Uh, yeah, it, it it opens on uh, on the, beside the turba. Uh, can you see? This is one of them that they were showing. You go to the property of a tool and, uh, well, it is a dialog box actually. Let me see the property of a line like this. If I go to the property of that line, it is showing in a, it is showing in a, uh, this is now a parrot, like the one for, so this is a parrot, the one for dimensioning, uh, the one for, for uh, AutoCAD Design Center was a parrot. Yeah, so those are examples of parrots. And uh, uh, we have those that we are uh, grouping them into uh, into the two, either, either customizable or uh, pre-designed parrots. So maybe later, as we are using them, you are going to see more examples so that you can get them uh, actually uh, how they are working. And uh, something also that um, is quite okay to note are the, are the dialog box. For example, the settings, what you are going to set them through a dialog box. So these box that help you to see more options on a tool are a dialog box. Uh, let me see another dialog box for example if i come here and go to the 
customize that and still and that is another dialog box so we have quite many of them based on the tools for which we were, we want to specify the properties or the options how to enter methods of entering commands we can either enter commands from the menus or from the toolbars or on, on the command area for example if i want to work with a line i can pick a line command here and now start working with the line or i can pick a line from the command uh, from that was picking a, a, a line from the menu now from the toolbar i can also pick a line from there and then continue to work with it or from the command area i can just type l for ID like that or i have already now taken the line and i can now continue with it or i can simply type in full line and it is picked and i can now continue to work with it like that so that is the different ways that you can uh, uh, enter commands in uh, AutoCAD and uh, whichever suits you the best you work with that and it is not only for lines uh, you can work with a line you can work with a circle you can pick any other uh, you can pick any other if it is a line you just click L or line if you are working with a polygon you just uh, click p for polygon i don't know whether it is going uh, to to take that polygon let me see whether it is going to pick yeah it has been taken you can see it is now asking me how many sided do i want uh, let me see it is a three side polygon so where do I want the center to be? I want the center to be here. How uh, enter? Do we want it to be inscribed? Okay. I can now come and click there. So you can see I've been able to draw a three-sided polygon. If it is any other object that you want to work with other than the uh, polygon, if it is a circle, you can just write a circle. If it is an ellipse, you can write ellipse. It is going to be picked on the command area and uh, there are three ways to stop drawing a, a line or even in the other uh, object if it is a circle or if it is uh, just click enter it is going to stop or you can just click escape to stop that And then there are three main coordinate systems that you will come across when drawing in AutoCAD. Absolute layer TFN, or uh, we are going to see demonstration later on this. Uh, not really, but uh, it is the same as the methods of entering points in AutoCAD. It's uh, absolute layer TFN, or and i want us to work with the absolute absolute using this method you enter the points as they relate to the origin of the autocad so the wcs or world coordinate system is the autocad default origin so this is the method to enter points in autocad you uh, by absolute you you enter the you enter the value of x and y as related to the origin now let me say i am i am working with a rectangle i want to draw a rectangle that is going to come from zero and move all the way first of all let me just write uh, 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 first of all specify a rectangle you specify a rectangle using two corners the first corner let me say it is going to be at zero zero 
the last corner let me say it will be at 8 at 10 7 from how far is the next how far is the this how far is this corner from the from the origin i want it to be on on x it will be vertical horizontally it will be 10 and vertically it will be 7 so you can see can you see you just zoom until it fits your work area so if i am to see that actually can you see it is 10 uh, don't mind about uh, that is a little too big i didn't want it to be that big and uh, actually also the other side can you see this that is seven can you see uh, uh, now i want to see if i was to draw the same rectangle using a line i start from zero zero can you see the next point i want it to be here so how far along x10 do i have anything on y nothing so the second point was 10 along x and nothing on y yeah how far is the third point from the origin on x it is 10 and on y it is 7 how far is the fourth point in the in the distance of x none but 7 on y can you see and then of course go back to where you started so that is how I can work out using absolute. You measure the distance of your points as they relate from the world coordinate system or of the AutoCAD origin. This point is at 10, 0. It is only around x, nothing on y. This point here is at 10, 7. You, it is going to be at 10, 7. This one here is going to be at 0, 7. There is no distance of x. It is at 0, 7. Now, suppose I'm working now using a relative coordinate system. I would put the points of my uh, i would put my values of x and y of that point as they relate from the first point <coughs> the first point should be the previous point so how far now let me say i take the rectangle the line again uh, the first point i did in have it so just put it to be zero zero the next point should be this how far is this from the previous point so I should say at, uh, do I have any distance of x uh, and nothing on y from the previous point, from this point here, I should only have the values of x and nothing on y. Ne the next point from now the current point where I am, I should have at, so no x but y note i am relating the next point from where i am right now the lower point you see this point from this point is only a wrong y nothing on x like you can see here on the command area the the next point from this point was only on x and nothing on y now this is where i was i want now to go to this point 
from this point how far it should be in the negative side of x and nothing on y yes if you put positive 10 it should move forward but i wanted to go uh, i want to go backwards so i should put negative 10 you see again now if i want to move on if i want to move on to the next point from the previous point now from the current point where i am i should move in the negative distance if i say i move positive seven it should go upwards but to go to the next point which is now where the origin is from the current point i am moving in the negative direction of y so you can see that i have been able to go there so that is how i can work using relative now i want us to see how i can work using for so working with the same uh, i start again because i don't have a, a, a previous point i start with zero zero the next point should be this one i move at if you note again here i'm moving at a given distance and a given angle so you're going to put that if i want to go at a distance of z 10 and an angle of 90 okay uh, something to note here if at this point moving on this direction is angle zero you can even see uh, it uh, have been can you see the angle was zero uh, if you noted the, the somewhere I was shown if I move up that angle is that angle is 90 if I move this direction the angle is zero if I move this ang direction the angle is 90 if I move this direction the angle is 180 if I move this direction the angle is 270 so I move at a distance is 10 and the angle not 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 the angle how I am putting the angle angle is 0 now from that point I move at a distance of 7 angle is 90 at a distance of uh, 10 angle is 180 and uh, a distance of 7 angle is 270 270 can also be negative 90 if the angles are positively increasing anti-clockwise but increasing negatively clockwise if i decide to go in this direction is if i don't want to use 270 i can use negative 90 negative 180 negative 90 negative 270 or whichever way okay that done i think now we are done with the three the geometries that we should be able to use or the object that we should be able to use we have seen one of them was the line <coughs> the circle is another one we should be able to draw a circle so the circle is here you can take a circle specify the center if you know where the center is you can click or you know if you know the values of x and y of that circle center you can put that we call that a coordinate any point on this object is has a coordinate or the values of x and y so every point on this object can be uh, determined based on the value of that point on x and y for example this here 
how far I set from the origin uh, if I may say something like that uh, just a guesswork uh, this point here you can be able to determine the coordinate of that based on the value of that point on x and y so you should be able to say this point here is maybe uh, 5 uh, 3 or maybe 5 2 so the uh, coordinate of that uh, of that point of that circle is uh, 5 2 uh, from uh, from here the center is something like 5 5 from here it should be the value of that the coordinate of the circle of the circle center maybe by guess what 5 5 so a coordinate is the value of a point of an object uh, based on how far that point is from the origin uh, in terms of x and y so the circle a rectangle we can draw a rectangle the hashing we are going to do that as we move on modifying <coughs> that is another class we should be able to i don't know whether i can uh, just try to work out just a few tools here i may not be able to demonstrate all the tools here just a few of them i should be able to demonstrate just a few tools here so we have seen how we can work with some of the tools here the circle the rectangle the line the rest are going to come as we move on so i want to work out something here for example a line like that i can erase it so there is an erasing tool there is an, a tool for duplicating so i can be able to say uh, this i can be able to copy i select i select it first then copy and then the base point from where you are copying let me say from the center and then i copy up to this point here can you see i have an another copy here so i want to uh, there's a mirror so there is duplicating this for duplicating offsetting is for duplicating for example i can say i want to to offset offset let's say the offset distance let me say is 0 0.2 or 4 or whatever and then the object to offset let me say it is this one on the inside like that or it is this one on the outside you just click the object and the direction to offset like this line here I can offset it to the outside like that that offset offset then I have some I have something that I call the the mirror click the mirror and then click the objects to mirror enter and then specify the mirror line let me say this, this line here is the mirror line okay can you see opposite objects are created on the other side so you have seen copy you have seen mirror we have seen offset now i want us to do something like array so uh, I need something, just a small object like this one here, uh, small like that, probably, uh, or even smaller. Uh, I can copy the same, so let me just copy. I copy that to this corner here now I want to do the array I want to array which object I want to array this object and uh, I want it to be poorer so I want them to be four uh, how many are how many rows are this uh, there are let me say three rows and three columns and uh, and then I just say uh, the row offset is up to the center 
the quorum offset is up to this other center here like that and then say okay oh it has been made the way i did not want it to go let, let me do it opposite uh, let me see i want to array uh, three by three okay the row offset is from here the, the row offset is from here up to the center the column offset is from here up to the center and then say okay object to offset of course i have not chosen that and then say okay you should be able to see the row offset there were two three okay there are others that have been introduced can you see only one i think so three of them three rows has been made three columns has been made whichever you call the quorum or whichever you call the row okay uh, if i want to array now now not uh, rectangular but for let me array like uh, six or how whichever number and uh, the object i want to array is this now in a circular path and uh, the center i want to use i don't know whether the center is here the center of this circle i hope it is here and then uh, i've chosen uh, yeah like that and then say okay can you see some circles have been array on a, on a circular path so that was array moving i can be able to move object from one location i selected uh, click move then click the base point of moving maybe i can move it from here uh, to another location like here like that that is moving and another one is the scaling the scaling is making small so you can click the object to scale then scale then the base this point for scaling here and then you can see it has been made small and uh, another one is stretching maybe it is the opposite another one is trimming okay enter after clicking trimming and then click all the unwanted parts all the unwanted parts that i want to remove you can remove like, like them like that all the unwanted parts like that if i just also don't want that i can also remove it like that so that is uh, trimming uh, we've seen most of the tools that i would like to use those others we are going to introduce them as we move on so that was modifying using the modifying tools we have seen trim remove some unwanted parts in an object uh, offset did i use offset fillet and stretch which other one did i use mirror make objects that are duplicate objects that are opposite the subject objects and then are a duplicate objects in a pattern either circular or or rectangular and uh, then uh, a few others that we have seen and uh, i think that is okay dimensioning we do dimension or label the drawings uh, example this program has not been set and uh, we didn't have time to do the settings but we can uh, measure the, uh, the the distances the the dimension the vertical and the horizontal dimensions angular dimensions for example if i wanted an angle between two lines i can uh, measure it like that mm, it is not working very okay the settings are not quite uh, uh, working but uh, i can do i can go to dimension links and styles and do uh, change the the settings so that it can be a little smaller uh, let me see whether you can make it a little smaller in terms of the height of the of the uh, in terms of the heights 
let me say it's 0 0.5 and the arrow size also I want them to be 0 0.5 so we should uh, be able to, to come up with it in being smaller okay that is the way we can maybe change the size of the dimension a little bit and we can also work out the dimension in terms of diameter of circles I can show the diameter of circle the radius of a circle so the difference is that radius has an R before it but a diameter has a crossing a crossing circle before it so you can tell uh, whether a dimension is uh, a diameter or a radius and uh, those other dimensionings also we should be able to practice them and mark them out uh, that was about the dimensioning and now we should uh, at this point be able to work out some examples like this one you can draw something like this one uh, you should be able to draw an, uh, some objects like this one this is another class and uh, so far i think our session has come to an end and thank you for the time that we have been together if you have not subscribed please again remember to subscribe the channel is my graphics office of solutions uh, please subscribe so that the next video that i'm going to post for you you are going to be notified and uh, if you have uh, uh, loved the video that i have shared with you please like it and share it with a friend so that uh, we can get to run together so see you in my next video uh, uh, thanks